Hello and welcome to another edition of At Home With. That's right, the name is called At Home With. Great name indeed. And this show is brought to you by the amazingly dedicated corporate partners of the North Carolina Courage and the North Carolina Football Club. And we also want to give a shout out to our great fans, including Uproar, the great super fan base supporters club of the North Carolina Courage. Hello again, everybody. I'm Dean Linky. Great to be with you even during these unprecedented times. And during these unprecedented times, we Certainly send our sympathies and our prayers to all those that have been affected by this dreaded pandemic. And we send our appreciation and applause to those on the front line, the first responders trying to get us back to normal and more importantly, get us back on the field. Thank you so much. Again, thanking our partners. Also want to thank the great members of the North Carolina Courage and North Carolina Football Club. That includes our owner, Steve Malik, President General Manager, Kurt Johnson, Pete Chandra, Kyle Prairie, the whole gang, and then, of course, behind the scenes, pulling all the triggers for At Home With. This has been fun for me. I want to thank the VP of Broadcasting, Jorge Acuna, as well as Morgan Brown and Santiago and everybody else. It's going to be fun for me today at Home With because we got a new player, and this is big news. This is not just your ho-hum player. This girl is legit. To quote Jerry Smith as we start to see video of this player, the legendary Santa Clara coach. He said, this girl's a beast. They were playing UCLA. She scores two goals. He's screaming as an assistant coaches can't handle her. They're saying, can we come up with a plan at halftime? They come up with a plan to try to stop her from scoring. They come out the second half. Haley Mace is playing center back. And guess what Santa Clara can't do. They can't score against UCLA because Haley Mace was moved from center forward where she scored two goals against Santa Clara in the back, Anson Dorrance tells me it was the opposite. She started in the back and then came up front and scored goals. Haley Mace, Mac Herman Trophy semifinalist. She's played with the U.S. national team. Her numbers at UCLA are off the charts. She starred for Amanda Cromwell in high school. She totaled 26 goals and 15 assists. She's a soccer player. She can play anywhere, center back, center forward, midfield, you'll name it. She is legit, spent the last year overseas, and here she is now, Haley Mace, a member of the North Carolina Courage. Haley, great to be at home with Haley Mace. How you doing? Good, how are you? Well, so Haley, I needed to call some people in college soccer to get to know you a little bit better. Obviously, I know your story because you're legit. You've worn the red, white, and blue, but I wanted to find out about you, and you just heard Jerry Smith, I mean, the story he said about that game, I don't know if you remember it, but they couldn't stop you. And then in the second half, they moved you back to center back. That's one of the ways that people describe you. I don't know about you, but if I was a soccer player, I would dig that. What do you think? Yeah, I think it's pretty cool. I don't think a lot of players are able to do that. So, yeah. So where do you prefer to play? Like if you had your choice and coach said, you know what? You can play wherever you want right now on the North Carolina Courage. Where would you want to play? Um, that's a tough question. I like both positions, but I guess scoring goals is pretty fun. So probably forward. Okay. So at UCLA with Amanda Cromwell, who is indeed one of the legends of the game as uh, before we came on the air, I was telling Haley Mace that I was the press officer of the 91 team and she hadn't even been born <laughs> until like another 10 or so years later, Amanda Cromwell almost made that team. So with Amanda Cromwell, where did she play you the most? Um, both like I played both evenly, honestly, I think freshman year, um, I played center back sophomore year, center back, and then junior and senior year, I was playing forward and then a little bit of outside back senior year. Okay, and when you got the call up for the She Believes Cup, where were you playing with the U.S. national team? Center back. Center back, okay. So, and what are you feeling so far in limited time with Paul Riley? Where is he looking to perhaps play you? Uh, he still doesn't know. Um, I don't know if he really sees me as a defender just from the first week of training. Um, he said that I have a really good shot, so maybe midfield – I don't know. <laughs> and, yeah. So I, I'm guessing maybe I'll help you with the answer. Cause here's what perhaps I'm thinking, uh, especially with this team, I call it the best team in the world. And I feel like we can stand behind it, right? They've won three shields in a row. They've won three of the last four championships in a row, including their time with the Western New York flash. And at the end of the day, as you heard me, I described you, you're a soccer player, which I love 
talking about soccer players because that means you can play anywhere like crystal dunn can play anywhere i mean she could probably even play goalkeeper if you wanted you probably will do that right wherever paul riley needs you you'll play right yeah 100 <laughs> percent. all right perfect and of course uh with all that great success what have you already seen out of paul riley that inspires you what do you like about playing for him um i i really like he's energetic when he coaches like he's always demoing and um i think he's also like hard on us but also motivating us at the same time um i really like that fitness is a huge thing for this team because that's what i lack a lot of um so i just think he's gonna shape me into a really good soccer player i love that and i want to learn about uh, your decision to come back and go to the North Carolina Cruise. But before we do that, because we're at home with Haley Mace, let's learn about the home you grew up in. Tell us about your mom and dad, where you grew up, and don't leave anything out. When you started playing soccer, did you play other sports? And then what led to your decision to go to UCLA? Kind of fill in the blanks because we got plenty of time. Okay. Um, so my family has grown up in Ventura, California. Um, my Both my parents actually went to my rival high school um my mom played volleyball basketball and ran track my dad played baseball and a little bit of football um my mom continued on to play volleyball at west texas a and um she's an amazing athlete i think um i got all my genes from her <laughs> um and then my brother and sister my brother plays basketball um my sister played a little bit of volleyball, but I think I took all the athletic genes. So <laughs> I don't know if they're going to continue to play. Um, and then growing up, I played soccer, basketball, volleyball, um, a little bit of field hockey in middle school. Cool. And then in high school, I had to choose between soccer and basketball to play because they're the same season. And then I obviously chose soccer. Um, but I definitely miss basketball a lot. And then I played volleyball in high school as well. And I got recruited to play volleyball in college for a like, couple smaller schools. Um, but then once we told them I was going to play soccer in college, they just stopped looking at me. <laughs> okay. Um, what yeah. club do you give credit for youth soccer? Uh, I played for Ventura Football Club. It's pretty small. I don't think a lot of people know about it. Um, and then I went to Eagles my senior year of high school okay and when did the letters start coming in you mentioned volleyball for small schools ucla is not a small school they are perennial power indeed yeah. when did the letters start coming in to go to one of the perennial powers well i wasn't really being recruited for soccer because i played for such a small club and then my parents were kind of like we need to get you on a higher level club team so that you can be seen by these colleges and play in college showcase tournaments. So I got borrowed to play on Legends for a couple tournaments. And then that's where UCLA saw me play. Um, and then started emailing that, like I emailed them to come to the tournament because I really wanted to go there. I didn't really email a lot of schools. Um, didn't really know how the recruiting process went because nobody from Ventura really goes on to play um, like college soccer. That's um, pretty cool. So you yeah. had your eye on UCLA the whole time. Yeah. I mean, I just, I kind of wanted to be close to home, but also like far enough away. And I just knew that they were a legit team and it would have been like, it was my dream school. So, <laughs> so you didn't have to say no to somebody else. It just came down to UCLA or UCLA, or was there a backup? Um, I Pepperdine also, recruited me and then there was one other school uh fuller cal state fullerton they mm -hmm. actually offered me so i pretty much just said no to those two and said yes to ucla what do you remember about the day you said yes to ucla i guess more appropriately what do you remember about when you got the call or the letter or i guess in today's world the text i don't know how it all goes down when did you, how did you get notified that you're going to go to ucla um, well, they asked me to come on a visit, and then when I got on the visit, that's when they told me they were going to offer me um, a part scholarship. So, 
Okay, let's talk about that visit. Did they have any UCLA celebrities come around to talk to you or big time professors or leaders? Not that I can remember. <laughs> I mean, it was like, I got to tour the campus, um, watch the team train. I think I got to see them play a game. Um, yeah. Okay, so they, they had you, they didn't need celebrities. You wanted to be yeah, a Bruin. I think, I think they knew that I wasn't being like contacted by any other schools, so. <laughs> That's pretty neat though, because um, the one person I wasn't able to reach, in fact, as you know, you and I tried to call her beforehand is Amanda Cromwell, because I would have been interested in her take. I got to believe perhaps maybe there was a little hide and seek with you then since you came from that smaller program and you turned out to be this big time power that has already represented the United States. Do you think they were like, hey, let's just keep this superstar a secret a little bit? I don't know what was going on in her head, maybe a little bit, but yeah, I don't know. All right. So, yeah, so I started to cut you off there, but um, talk about your time at UCLA because you led the Bruin freshman in games played. Um, at, you led the Bruin freshman team in games played and starting 15, and you pretty much played the entire time, sort of when you were spending time with the U.S. team. Just talk about your time at UCLA. Um, like what part about it? Like the games or? Yeah, all of it. Yeah, your your whole experience. Um, it was great. <laughs> <laughs> I got a lot of minutes. Um, I mean, it's amazing to be able to play for such a, like, top team. I never thought I would be in that position just from where I came from and everything. Um, but, yeah, my whole experience was great. Like, I honestly miss college. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, that was a tease because we're going to, we come back, we're going to show some pictures of you, and we're going to mm -hmm. talk a little bit more about Amanda Cromwell. And, basically, we call the North Carolina Courage UCLA East as – We've had a ton of Bruins have great success here with the North Carolina Courage, and we know you're going to be another one. Guess what, folks? We are at home with Haley Mace. We'll be back with more of Haley after this quick break. Welcome to Wake Med Children's. Come on. Specialized care for teeny tiny babies. Two teens and really sick and hurt kids. By doctors, surgeons, nurses, and support teams. All pediatric trained. And like super nice and a gazillion pediatric specialties even an emergency department just for kids you know what i'm feeling better already wake med children's your children's hospital and a whole lot more welcome to wake med children nearly 150 years of experience goes into making each and every continental tire So you can trust with total confidence that our tires will deliver superior performance. No matter where the road takes you. Continental Tire, for what you do. Welcome back to At Home With, North Carolina Courage Style, the newest member of the North Carolina Courage. All of the Courage fans are excited about it. More than 100 folks registered for this as we say hello to all of you. And if you are on now watching at home with Haley Mace, feel free to drop a question via the chat line and we'll do our best to ask her questions in the fourth segment after two more commercial breaks. I do have several questions that were already sent in by our great fans. And I think I'm speaking for Haley. I know I'm speaking for the entire organization when I say I miss you. Like I wish we were calling games and watching the best women's pro team in the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, can't wait to get back out there sometime soon, I certainly hope. All right, Haley Mace, we went to break talking about UCLA. I think the great Jorge Acuna has got some pictures of you in your UCLA colors. And perhaps uh, as they pop up, there we go, wearing the UCLA blue. That is a beautiful sight. I mean, those are great colors. I lived out there as well. I lived in Westwood for quite some time. And UCLA is just a fantastic school, right? Yeah. I miss it. <laughs> Did you go to football games too out at the Rose Bowl or is that a little bit more difficult to, to do? Yeah, it was really difficult to try to get to those games, especially because they're during our season too. Um, Amanda didn't really like us going to them. I think we got to go to maybe two at my time at UCLA, just when we had an off end or something. How about basketball at Poly? Yeah, I've been to a couple of basketball games. They're fun. Poly is awesome. 
So usually in sports, I call a lot of different college sports and usually uh, one sports team spends time with another sports team. Sometimes a women's team spends time with a men's team or another women's team. Like if you had to say who was the Scotty Pippen team for the UCLA women's team, what, what Bruins team did you guys hang out with the most? Um, we honestly hung out with each other. <laughs> we okay. didn't really like go outside of our circle. I mean, did certain people hung out with certain teams, I think. Um, so you just stayed together. So you weren't hanging with the men's soccer team or anything like they did their thing. You guys did your thing. And yeah, we would hang out with them sometimes, but it wasn't like our whole team and their whole team. It just depended on who was friends with who. <laughs> I got it. Well, you guys were focused on trying to win national championships. I respect that for yeah. sure. What did you major in at UCLA and why did you pick that major? Um, I am a history major. I haven't graduated quite yet. Um, and I picked it because it was kind of easier. <laughs> um, I was passing those classes and it it's like interesting. Like I don't know a lot about a lot of history in other countries and history of the United States. So um, it was interesting. I tried to do sociology. Uh, that didn't work out because I didn't pass one of my classes. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> not a big school girl. Okay, well, that's interesting because I always ask this question. This one might be tough for you, Haley Mace, and that is if you weren't a professional women's soccer player, what do you think you'd be doing? Um, I think if I could go back to school and not be playing soccer, I would probably study FISI or like nutrition or something like that. Um, but I guess now I could probably go back to school for, um, and like study nutrition. So I think I would like that. Since we mentioned Amanda Cromwell and I was not able to reach her, you heard her voicemail. If I did reach her and I said, Amanda Cromwell, Give me one sentence to describe Haley Mace. In Amanda Cromwell's words, what would that one sentence be? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> That's tough. I have no idea. That's, that's kind of broad. I feel like we need to ask her. <laughs> All right, I will ask her. I'm pretty sure she's going to say something similar to Anson Dorrance and Jerry Smith who played against you because if they are raising you up and putting you on that high standard of well we couldn't stop her scoring and then when we tried to score they had her at center back and then doing the reverse and probably something about that and your ability to play all over the field well I'd said that uh, the North Carolina Courage are UCLA East I think we have some video of some fellow UCLA, UCLA players that are key for not only the North Carolina Courage, but for the U.S. national team, when you think about Sam Mewis and Abby Dahlkemper, we'll roll some video here. And as you see Sam Mewis absolutely crank it, and then I've never seen a center back in all my days of calling women's soccer strike a ball the way Abby Dahlkemper does. I mean, talk about those two players. I realize that was a different time, and you didn't play with them at UCLA, but you got to be a proud Bruin being able to play with them now. Yeah, I'm actually really excited to play with them. I got to play with them a little bit uh, with the national team, but I definitely look up to them. They're great leaders and amazing soccer players. So, Well, and Sam Mewis, you look up to her more ways than one because she's a giant out there, right? I mean, <laughs> as you talk about a player that is, out, is really good at using her body. You got to appreciate that as a soccer player, right? Yeah, I'm. she uses it to her advantage, so... <laughs> Now, as someone who we talked about, you like being a forward, but you've played in the back. When you see the way Abby Dahlkemper can strike a ball, I mean, there's just not too often where you have a center back taking corner kicks the way Paul Riley will use Dahlkemper because she strikes a ball so well. Mm -hmm. That's got to be inspiring, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm really like whether I'm playing forward or center back, I'm just excited to learn from her as a player and as a person. Hopefully so, I can pick up some of her skills. <laughs> there you go. Uh, I don't think you've been practicing enough to know, but, um, you know, Crystal Dunn played at North Carolina, North Carolina and UCLA have had a lot of battles. Jessica McDonald played at North Carolina. Is there any trash talking at all ever between the UCLA girls and the North Carolina girls, or is all that past you? 
I don't know. I feel like they're like a, a little bit older than me, so maybe they did back in back when they were playing. Um, but I mean, when we played UNC, there wasn't like that much trash talking or anything like that. <laughs> okay, you just got out there and get down to business. Yeah. Well, when you do look around, and um, again, this is unprecedented time. You came back. We're super excited to have you. Everybody was like, and I remember Paul Riley telling me, we got a good one here, and everybody has said that. And then you're faced with this pandemic. Talk about what you've been doing to stay, because you mentioned that one of the things that you need to do is get fit. What, what, what have you been doing with your time before they opened up these small-sided uh, trainings? Um. I mean, me and my roommate would go out and run a lot. Um, Haley, my roommate, Haley Harbison, is an outside back, and she is way more fit than I am. So it's, like, great having her to try and, like, keep up with her and try and get my fitness up that way. Um, she definitely motivates me a lot. So it's good to well, have her. Yeah, there you go. And because you spent time with the U.S. national team, I'm assuming you don't have as much of the, oh, wow. But I got to tell you, as just the broadcaster, I still have the, oh, wow, because these players are legit. Like, you just can't stop going, oh, my goodness, when you think about Jessica McDonald and Lynn Williams up top and then Crystal Dunn and Dabinia and Denise O'Sullivan and Sam Ewis and then Jaylene on one side and Merritt Mathias on the other side and the two Abbeys in the middle and the goalkeeper from Canada and former Bruin Roland. I mean, just, I mean, just in players on the bench that are incredible, like everywhere you turn, mm -hmm. there's a unique player and a unique personality. Yeah. It, it's pretty cool just to see that. Like, I think just the first week of practice, even without the national team players there, it was very competitive and at a very high level. So it's nice to know like that, like this team has players on the bench that could come in and just kill it. You mentioned killing it. So I don't want to speak for you, but I know as a young guy in the broadcasting business, there were people that I looked up to. If I'm you and I walk in and you're thinking about, all right, now I got to get my fitness right. And then you see arguably the most fit woman in the world in Kiwi, Abby Urseg. I don't know if you've watched her videos at all. If you haven't, <laughs> you need to watch them because she's insane. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's incredible. And then you see Jessica McDonald, who's a mom and in her early 30s and all that muscle and stuff. I mean, that's got to move you a little bit, right? Yeah, it's honestly just super motivating and like, just I want to be like them and want to be able to push myself to be like them. Just like they've had a lot more time to get to where they are um and i'm just like excited to see if hopefully i can be as fit as them be as strong as them all that so okay so they're on the one side and then we went to at home with denise o'sullivan to start and i was so excited because admittedly she's she's my favorite player back-to-back -back mvp because soaking wet i don't know she might weigh 50 pounds i have no idea but she's one of the toughest young ladies I've ever met. Have you already experienced that? Have you spent any time with Denise O'Sullivan? Because she's legit. No, yeah. they. A lot of the national team players weren't there the first week of training. Um, so I haven't seen her play yet, but we've talked a few times about coffee shops that she likes to go to. So she's helping me out with that. <laughs> okay, and then, so does that mean you haven't seen Dabinia as well? Because Dabinia might be when she's done right up there with Marta as one of the all-time great Brazilian players. Yeah, no, she wasn't back, but she's been out. Like I've seen them at the fields and stuff training. So. All right. Awesome. Haley Mace, we're at home with her. When we come back, we'll talk about her time with the U S youth national team and also with the U S women's national team at home with Haley Mace. At Coastal Credit Union, we offer financial services, but we're not a bank, and that's a good thing. Here's why. Banks answer to Wall Street. At Coastal, we're owned by our members. That means we answer to you. Banks charge their customers inflated, unnecessary fees to increase their profits. We actually share our profits with our members through higher dividends, better rates, and lower fees. Find out more about how we're different than banks and how we work harder for you and your money at bankbetter.org.
Welcome back to At Home with Haley Mace, making me earn my money today. Yes, <laughs> she has not given me a whole lot on the question. I just teased you, Haley. One thing you did give us during the break is you showed us a new tatty. Let's let's check that out because yeah. uh, obviously they're going to see that uh, when you're playing for the Courage. Tell us about the inspiration. What made you do that and what does it mean? Um, what was my first one? So my first one was the cross. Um, I'm Christian, so I got a cross. Um, this is my, I have one behind my ear also, but this is like my first real tattoo. Um, and then when I moved to Sweden, I really wanted another one because they're kind of addicting. Um, so then I got these lotus flowers and I got three because one for me, one for my brother, one for my sister. And then after that, I got some shading around the cross because then I decided I want to do a half sleeve. Um, so I needed to fill it in a little bit. And then I got the palm trees and like a little bit of water right here when I was home, when I got back home. So I got that in November, um, just representing like Ventura. I've lived by the beach my whole life, um, love the beach. And then I got this quote type thing, work hard, stay humble. Just oh, cool. cause I think it really like represents me. Um, Probably my, one of my favorite ones. Yeah, I need to get a little bit more filled in just to complete the half sleeve, but I love it, so. Now that, that quote says a lot, and perhaps that says a lot even about this time we're spending with you is work hard, stay humble, let your work do the talking for you. I'm okay with that. What does Chris and Wendy May say about the ink on the arm? Um, They're fine with it. They have tattoos. My dad has some on his shoulders and then my mom has one on her ankle my sister who's three years younger than me actually got like a big tattoo before I got like my cross um so she's kind of a tattoo addict now <laughs> but, <laughs> that's yeah. that beach mentality though I dig it yeah. sure. absolutely <laughs> what about Tyson does he have any he's uh, no he's 17 so he's not allowed to yet when he's 18 he can get one if he wants Okay, that's the rule, 18, yeah. and, and you're good to go. Okay, um, all right. Hey, we said we were going to talk about U.S. Youth National Teams, but before we do that, I was supposed to ask you about your time over in Australia and Sweden. Talk about that experience. Um, yeah, Australia was amazing. Like, the country is beautiful. Um, it was good to go over there just, like, because it was my first time playing professionally. Um, so I think it was like a good stepping stone. Um, I only got to play like three games, I think. Um, but it was so much fun. Like I would definitely consider going back um, in the off season. And then Sweden um, was good. It was definitely different just being in a country where English isn't their first language. Um, but they were really good about like speaking English around me for the most part. Um, I think it helped them practice their English. So <laughs> that was good. Um, and then the soccer was, I think, really good too. Um, yeah, the level was high. Um, I think the league is super competitive too. I was playing for one of the better teams. Um, but honestly, like in that league, you could end up losing to any team any day. Like it just depends. Um, it's super competitive. Uh, yeah, I think I learned a lot. Um, I'm just glad to be back. <laughs> I, I don't mean to stereotype, but I got to believe you fit right in in Sweden because you look like everybody else over in Sweden, right? Yeah. I mean, people have said that if I would walk into a coffee shop, they would start talking to me in Swedish. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm actually from America. <laughs> They're like, oh, no way. I thought you were Swedish. <laughs> yeah. So if I were to meet Chris and Wendy, which one of them gave you the dimples? Um, I guess my mom. She okay. has like one, but I don't know if it's like genetic or if somebody. Like, you know, I, I have major craters and neither one of my boys got them. So, but my mom passed them down to me. So. Oh, that's, that's cool. Yeah, my little cousin actually has the exact same dimples as I do, like two on one side, one on the other. <laughs> it's kind of funny how that happened. Yeah, indeed. Having fun with Haley Mace. All right, let's pop some pictures up during your time with the U.S. Youth National Team and with the U.S. Women's National Team. In fact, 
let's go to the ladder, the full team. You were actually here, right? You actually trained at Wake Med Soccer Park, correct? Yeah. Break down that experience. Um, yeah, I mean, it was before I ever knew I was coming to this team. So it's kind of nice, like, or cool to know that I've already played in the stadium and trained on the fields before I got here. So it's kind of coincidence. <laughs> yeah. So what was your first call up? What youth team was your first U.S. youth team that you actually made and played in a full competition? Um, I think... So I got called into like U19 camp. That was my first camp ever. And then with the U23s, I got to go to Sweden actually. Um, and we played in some cup. I can't remember the name of it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think I was I was on the younger side compared to most of the girls that were there. Um, but yeah, it, BJ was the coach. So he called me in to that camp um, and we played a few games. I didn't I don't know I think I got like 10 minutes of playing time in that one um but that was my first like actual like game experience I'm not sure if you can see these pictures but for me having worked for U.S. soccer and being around the players at the highest level anytime you can put the red white and blue uniform on and obviously I never could but I could be around them and talk about them I, I gotta believe it's the highest honor yeah, it's it's definitely very humbling, even just like putting the practice shirt on for the first time, like having the crest on your chest, like it's just a really humbling experience, like something I never thought I would be doing. Um, so I'm super grateful to wear the crest. I asked you that question earlier about being all being in all of any of the players for the North Carolina Courage when you were with the full national team. Was there someone like Carly Lloyd or Alex Morgan where you were like, whoa, this is pretty cool? Um, I mean, I didn't really like like their people like I didn't think of them as like. I don't know that they're, they're just soccer players, and that's kind of what I had to go into it thinking. Otherwise, I would have just been crapping my pants like <laughs> playing with them <laughs> so I just kind of had to tell myself that like I guess I'm here for a reason like um they're just like me but obviously they have way more experience so obviously I look up to them and respect them and all of that it's just the way I had to think in order to try and perform all right awesome obviously you started with the U23s which is fantastic we're here at home with Haley Mace, seeing those great pictures with the U.S. national team. We are starting to get questions come in through the chat line. We'll see if their questions get longer answers than my questions. When we return, we're at home with Haley Mace. Stay with us. I'm just teasing you, Haley. You're good. from now, you'll be a little older. A year from now, you'll be a little wiser. Will you be stronger? Your best is not behind you. Look forward. Welcome back to At Home With, the newest member of the North Carolina Courage, Haley Mace. And Haley, thanks for sharing your experiences in Australia, in Sweden, also with the U.S. national team. When you got the call that the North Carolina Courage were going to trade McCall Zerboni for your rights to come to the North Carolina Courage, tell us about that call and how you felt about coming back and playing for arguably the best women's pro team in the world. Um, honestly, it was, I was kind of shocked. I didn't think, um, they were one of the teams that were interested in trading for me. Um, but honestly, I was ecstatic because they are the number one team in the league. Um, yeah, Paul just called me. We talked about his Bulldogs. Um, 
so that was cool I have a bulldog at home too and I, I'm obsessed with them um so it was just like great to have something in common with him um yeah I was super happy and couldn't wait to get here what's your bulldog's name Hank Hank that's a good yeah. name for a bulldog yeah. indeed what's Paul's bulldog's names do you know I I've only met them I've met one of them once I can't remember, I can't remember their name okay I'll yeah. have to ask him next time I talk to him yeah. never get tired of talking to Paul Riley I just did a, a webinar with Paul Riley and Nancy Norris the other day the guy is is brilliant I think he's the best women's pro coach in the world all right let's get to these questions from our fans there's a lot of them are you ready because yeah got to answer them they're the fans okay so here we go first off question for Haley Mace what's your pre-game ritual I don't have one wow yeah you just roll it huh yeah I guess I listened to some music before the game but I feel like everybody does that <laughs> You are a beach girl. I like it. Okay. I don't have one. I'll work with that. What has been your favorite show to binge with a little extra time during the COVID quarantine? Um, I, so I started Grey's Anatomy before I went to Sweden and then I was only on like season 10 or something like that. And then they didn't have it in Sweden. So I went a whole year without seeing it. And then I got back and finally got to finish it, even though there's an insane amount of seasons that's a lot of seasons so no tiger king no ozarks no Sopranos. i watched ozark i finished started and watched that okay i think i've i started and watched a couple <laughs> any tiger king at all no no just staying away from that well you'll, yeah. you'll remain smarter because of it i assure you <laughs> um looking back when you were a u15 youth player what skill development made the biggest impact in your game and what advice can you give to U15 players to develop a love for the game? I'll ask it again. When you were a U15 youth player, what skill development made the biggest impact? And what advice could you give to some U15 players that are watching you right now? Skill development? Um, <laughs> I feel like when I was 15 forever ago. Um, I guess just like getting your touches on the ball like even just like small little cone drills like that helps a lot just on your own time um juggling you can do on your own you don't even need anyone else to be there with you um yeah I think just like a lot of skill drills uh will help a lot because at the next level you're just gonna have to be able to do those like 10 times faster um and then advice I would say doing a lot of extra work on your own time. Um, you can't just go to practice and go home. Like you need to, you have to be a soccer player for 24 hours, like eating, drinking a lot of water, eating the right foods, getting enough sleep. Like I think that is something I wish I knew when I was 15, um, just cause I think I would recover a lot better but also at 15, I feel like you can do anything. <laughs> so, yeah. All right. I love that. I'm not sure you have an answer for this one either based on the approach you took when you were with the U.S. Women's National Team, but I'm going to ask it because the fans sent it in, and that is who was your favorite player to watch growing up and why? And I guess it could be male or female. Yeah, I didn't have one. <laughs> I didn't really watch a lot of soccer growing up. Uh, my parents didn't watch soccer, so – it just wasn't part of like our family thing. Um, yeah. So I didn't really watch any of those players growing up. <laughs> I kind of thought that was going to be your answer, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I'm getting to know you here a little bit. What is the most challenging aspect of this period of self quarantine? That's a good question. What's the most challenging part of it? Um, not eating when I'm bored. <laughs> I think right? I'm eating a lot of snacks when I normally wouldn't just because I have so much time on my hands. Uh, Amen to that. Yeah. It's <laughs> killing me. Uh, <laughs> have you discovered any new talents during the quarantine? Are you playing an instrument or anything new, Haley? I'm going to get, I'm going to guess no, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no new talents. Um, I guess I'm decent at TikToking. Oh, we're going to get to that. Morgan Brown is uh, sending some good questions. Okay, so you're right. Uh, and Morgan Brown, who's the great PR director for the team, she says, how many TikTok 
followers would Haley need to reach to consider herself TikTok famous? What's that number? Um, followers. I mean, I only have, I think I'm at 200 right now, but I definitely think I would need like over 10,000. <laughs> okay. That's, uh, that's, yeah, that's good. I think that is the number. In fact, yeah. I think that like that number on all of those uh, social media platforms uh, makes you legit in that world. So 10,000 is the goal. All of you watching now should get over and TikTok, <laughs> TikTok, whatever you got to do and yeah. TikToker for sure. All right. Um, have you, uh, next question. Can you, uh Oh, this one, I, I don't know. I don't know if you're going to do this one. I, I think it'll be cool if you do, but someone is actually asking, can you do your favorite TikTok dance for us? <laughs> I don't know them off the top of my head. So yeah, I, I can't, you have to go follow my TikTok and then you can see them. All right. That's an affirmative. Podcast, so. There you go. That's an affirmative. No, I take it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, here's uh, somebody writing in for their daughter. This is my daughter, Loon. That's a great name, by the way. Wants to know what kind of position drills are you doing now that you cannot train with the team? Position drills. Um, sorry, can you repeat the question? Yeah, it says my daughter, Loon, wants to know what kind of position drills are you doing now that you cannot train with the team, center backs and center mid positions? Or are you doing um, any, like, I guess, heading or I don't know what honestly, you're doing not we haven't been doing much of that because like you can do that like you can wait to do that kind of thing um when you have more players around you uh right now we've just been doing like now that now we're training with the team so we can do that stuff but before we were just uh running a lot and doing um smaller like cone drills and juggling and soccer tennis and that kind of stuff what team are you most looking forward to playing against in the nwsl Ooh, that's a tough one. Maybe Washington Spirit, just because two of my former teammates are on that team, Ashley and Kaya. So I think I'm looking forward to play against them. There you go. That'll be exciting for you as well. Do you know what number you're going to wear for the North Carolina Courage yet? I think I'm 16. Yeah. Is that a number that means anything to you or a number is not important? Um, well, growing up, Obviously, I liked seven, and then everyone would choose seven, so I was like, oh, I'll just do 17. So I was 17 in high school, and then when I got to UCLA, someone already had 17, um, so I just went down a number, <laughs> and then my dad ended up telling me that 16 was his number um, when he played baseball, so I guess it's meaningful now. Okay, so you think you'll be 16 with the courage, too, then? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I am, yeah. Okay, that's cool. I like that. What position did your dad play in baseball? I don't know. Okay, there you go. <laughs> I might have been a pitcher. Yeah. Oh, you picked one position. Good for you, Haley. <laughs> yeah, I have no idea. I'll have to ask him. All right. What's one change or thing you did during quarantine to improve yourself and your game? A lot of questions, obviously, about quarantine. We're all yeah. going crazy. Hmm. Um, getting enough sleep, I think is pretty big on recover like in being recovered. Um, I bought a whoop band, um, and that helps track like how recovered I'm, I am the next day, how much sleep I'm getting. Um, so I think this is like a pretty cool, um, tool just for myself, um, and just making me the best soccer player I can be. So I'm hoping it helps <laughs> all right two more questions and then what you might describe as a torture session will be over okay uh, <laughs> good one <laughs> all right another one from meg v who says who were you most connected to on the north carolina courage so it doesn't say who are you most connected to but who were you i'm gonna ask them both who were you and who are you most connected to so was there a player beforehand that you were connected to and is there a player now that you're most connected to um I was not connected to anyone okay before I got here um and then now would be Haley Harbison because she's my roommate can she see you right now can she see me no she's in the living room <laughs> okay she doesn't know that you're just giving me three word answers <laughs> I, mean, I think she would be worse than me with this type of thing <laughs> 
I think you're doing great, obviously. You know, we only tease the ones that uh, we respect. One more question, and then we'll let you go. And it comes from Jim McMahon, another fan. And by the way, Haley, I think you're doing great, or I wouldn't tease you. Really glad to have Haley with the courage this year and looking forward to seeing the team play. What do you think are your greatest strengths, and what situations do those come into play? Your greatest strengths as a soccer player, Haley Mace. Um, I would like to think I'm pretty competitive. And then I guess I'm pretty fast. Um, so I guess when I need to chase down a ball, you can see if I'm fast or not. Um, and then the competitive part, I think it just comes out every day, honestly, like whether I'm making a TikTok with Haley or like, I don't know, playing a board game with her like you can just tell that I'm like even she's also super competitive but I think my competitive side comes out like every single day no matter what I'm doing I love it all right listen as we wrap up I need you to make me this promise because I feel like you're going to have an incredible career and I'm hoping that Jorge will let me call a lot of your games and you're going to have a lot of great moments which means I'm going to go to practice I'm hoping at some time down the road when you're doing all these interviews and becoming a superstar, Haley, we can pull, I can pull you aside and can say, Hey, remember that time we did that at home with thing. And I asked you a gazillion questions and we laughed about it. Will you do that for me? Yes, I will laugh about it for sure. <laughs> all right. And just so you know, I'm already, normally I let it be more fluid, but I am already to reference NWSL teams getting maced because I know that Haley Mace is going to be the real deal for the North Carolina Courage. I think that'll be a lot of fun. Haley Mace, thanks for letting me have fun with you. I know this isn't easy. I know that uh, they called you in to do this. I appreciate your time. More importantly, I know you're a phenomenal soccer player, and we're super excited to have you on the North Carolina Courage. Thank you. All right, do me a favor. Send your family the best, and thanks for your time. At home with Haley Mace, a whole lot of fun. I want to thank all the great folks and all the great corporate partners and Jorge Acuna. I'm Dean Linky. How about North Carolina Courage?